I've been a longtime fan of Everyday Chris and have thoroughly enjoyed his content, especially his in-depth coverage of electric vehicles with a strong focus on Tesla. In fact, his channel was one of my go-to sources before purchasing this Model 3. Recently, I've been following Rivian pretty closely, so I was eager to hear his take on the Gen 2 Rivian R1S in his latest video. Now, as someone who drives a Gen 1 R1T, I found some of his comparisons between Tesla Tesla and Rivian kind of surprising, and I wanted to share my perspective on a few of those more controversial points that he raised. Now let's dive in. But here's controversial conversation number one. Three years ago, Rivian's driver plus assistant features weren't that good. Today, I feel like it's the exact same. It does an okay job staying in a straight lane, but once it curves, it's a hit or miss. It freaks out when there's no road markings, even if it's just a small segment of it. Even on major highways like the five freeway in California, it'll suddenly stop working randomly. Chris isn't wrong when he says that Rivian's driver plus hasn't seen significant changes in the past three years. The first generation models are limited by their camera suite. However, the Gen 2 models, which debuted in early 2024, have introduced updated sensors and cameras. Now, the only new feature released this summer for Gen 2 vehicles was lane change on demand. Enhanced highway assist is expected in late 2024 and driver comfort assists are slated for 2025. So comparing Rivian's Driver Plus to Tesla's full self-driving isn't exactly fair. It's better matched versus Tesla's basic autopilot, which you don't pay for. Here's where my thoughts differ from Chris a little bit. On major highways, Rivian's system performs just as well as Tesla's. There's minimal ping-ponging between the lines like he states in the video, and I've actually found that lane keep is superior when you're in the right lane on the highway. This is where Tesla's basic autopilot struggles because it's focusing on the right line. So when that line goes away near off ramps, it has a lot of difficulty figuring out where the middle is. Additionally, Rivian's ability to recenter the vehicle when manually switching lanes is a nice bonus. One thing I also hated was when it was near like a big truck, it would stick to the middle of the lane no matter what, even though the truck was coming really close to our lane. With that said, I agree with Chris that Rivian needs to improve how the system positions the vehicle vehicle when passing large trucks to enhance passenger comfort. While Tesla is undeniably ahead in self-driving tech, Rivian isn't really chasing that level of autonomy right now. Instead, their focus is creating safety features that reduce driver fatigue, aligning with their mission to help you explore places others can't and enjoy the adventure along the way. Build quality. Come on, guys. Let me know. Tesla's build quality, it's a hit or miss, but it's so random. Even with Tesla being around for this long, there's still tons of build quality issues. For the most part, a lot of people are very, very happy, which is totally fine. For some reason though, the only thing we see on news is Tesla's build quality. Never any other brand. Chris makes a fair point about the scrutiny Tesla faces regarding build quality. My 2023 Model 3 is solid overall. Panel gaps are tight and the interior has no significant issues, aside from the occasional static in the right passenger speaker. Tesla's build quality has significantly improved since its early days. So I thought Rivian's quality control was good with no issues. For my Rivian loaner, media car. This is the car that give to media people. You would think they would give like the best of the best, make sure it's in tip top shape. I had a couple issues. One of my door was much harder to close than the others. My blind spot monitoring didn't work at all. I was told auto steer would work with this version, but for some reason it does not work. So if I want a lane change, I have to do it myself. My driver plus system just died randomly on the road trip. Nothing's working. My GPS voice navigation didn't work no matter what I tried. But comparing it to my friends with bigger issues, it's not that bad. One of my friends just got his brand new R1T. His motor died in his driveway. They ended up buying the Rivian back from him. That's how bad it was. Rivian, being a younger company, is also facing some early phase build quality challenges. My 2024 R1T has minor paint imperfections and the driver's door aligns closely with the front quarter panel. Neither of those issues really bother me enough to schedule a service visit though. Other brands also face similar problems. It's often just a matter of luck. At their core, Tesla and Rivian are software companies building vehicles while legacy automakers are vehicle companies trying to integrate software. The real question is, 
who will master both first. Now, controversial number four. Have you ever driven or test driven a Tesla? One of the great things is no matter what model you get, you get the performance, great handling. Although it may be too rough and bumpy for some people, you get instant acceleration with instant power. You can hug the curves, great control. It feels like a comfy sports car, even in the bigger Model Ys and X and even the Tesla Cybertruck. Now, one new thing about the Gen 2 Rivians is that they changed the suspension to make it smoother with better control. And yes, on straight roads and low speeds, the car felt comfortable, absorbs the bumps, and it was easy to drive. But introduce highway speeds, curves, and windy roads, I was extremely disappointed. My R1S came with the 22-inch wheels with the range wheels. And if this is the better suspension, I can't imagine what the Gen 1 R1Ss were like. With quick turns, I felt like I was going to roll over, felt very loose, not planted on the ground at all. And I was on sport mode with the lowest suspension. Let's talk about suspension and handling because here's where I disagree with Chris. Comparing the R1S to the Model Y or Model X kind of feels off. They're just drastically different systems. Battery sizes are different. Weight is different. Still, both my R1T and Model 3 are really fun to drive, quick and responsive. For highway comfort, my R1T edges out my Model 3, but if you want to talk performance, quick, agile movements, it's going to be my Model 3 over the R1T. It all just depends. Now, again, everything that I'm talking about right now, and this is important, it's in comparison to a Tesla. So for me, it's like the equivalent of comparing the performance of a BMW or Porsche with a Toyota Camry. Calling Tesla the Porsche and Rivian the Camry is maybe just a slight exaggeration. I think a more accurate analogy would be comparing Tesla in 2024 to Tesla in 2028. Number five, I'm not sure if it's because it's so tall in the back, but driving the R1S felt like I was driving a big car and it really felt like a big car. Compared to the size of the Model Y, the Rivian R1S is gigantic and it's great for tall people like myself, lots of headroom and interior space, easy to get in and out. But if you're a kid or you're elderly, because of that high ground clearance, you may have some trouble getting in and out. And mine was on the lowest setting as well. But if you compare it to the Model X, the Model X is much lower to the ground, so it's easier to get in and out. Chris's comments about Rivian's height is valid. The kneel feature helps, but might still be challenging for someone like my grandparents. Ultimately, this comes down to personal preference when choosing a vehicle. Number six, sound system, bruh. Like people always said, Tesla's sound system is so good. Tesla's sound system is so great. Even the cheapest, most basic one has the most amazing sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I honestly thought the Model Y premium sound system didn't really sound that good. I wasn't the biggest fan. But after driving the Gen 2 R1S, the Model Y sound system, best sound system in the world. I triple checked too. I was like, how is it this bad? There's no way. I emailed Rivian just to make sure that my Gen 2 had the premium top of the line new sound system. But holy moly, it was so bad. Now in Rivian's defense, I'm not sure if my model was affected, but now that I think about it, it may have been because there's no way it could be that bad. There's been a recall for certain Rivian models where they installed the incorrect amplifier. People are saying that they had the wrong one and just bricks the audio so you don't hear anything. But man, that alone was a huge letdown. All right, the elephant in the room. Uh, my R1T has the older premium sound system based on the Meridian speakers, and it sounds absolutely phenomenal. It's on par with Tesla's industry-leading audio systems. However, Rivian's Gen 2 vehicles using different speakers have faced criticism for muddy and imbalanced sound. Rivian is fully aware of the issue, and according to their chief software officer, a software update 2024.43 should help to resolve these issues. And just to clarify, the service campaign that Chris shares doesn't look like it's for Gen 2 vehicles, as these are all 2025 models. So that issue is kind of irrelevant for Gen 2s. Time will tell, but I always recommend the premium sound upgrade for anyone purchasing a Rivian because it should get much better. All right, guys, number seven, time to talk tech. Rivian always tries and says that they never want to copy Tesla. They want to be set apart from Tesla. Well, Tesla, camp mode, dog mode, sentry mode. You can view the cameras while in park. Rivian, 
Oh, I like that. I like those features. Let's go ahead and add our own version of camp mode, dog mode, gear guard. Now with gear guard, you can view the cameras while in park. Rivian was the first though, to have the auto level suspension when camping your car. But man, tech wise, Rivian and not just Rivian's fault, every other car brand is always playing catch up with Tesla. Tesla's full self-driving, auto park, summon, all these features are all amazing compared to Rivian. And while Rivian is slowly catching up, it always seems to be a few years behind Tesla. Again, Chris, I have to push back. Rivian isn't trying to copy Tesla. They're targeting a totally different audience. Features like dog mode, camp mode, and gear guard security systems are just industry standards now, thanks to Tesla's innovation. Rivian as a younger company is playing catch up, but that's the beauty about competition. It drives progress. Topic number eight, it's great, but it's also extremely stressful. Now, I drove the R1S over 1,000 miles, pretty much charged at Tesla superchargers 80% of the time. While it's amazing I could charge at Tesla superchargers, I had two major issues. First, it's probably the most stressful experience if the supercharger is busy and there are not that many of them. Why? Because of the location of the charge port, you have to hog two spots. There were so many times someone would park next to me only to be super confused as to why their cable wasn't there for them to charge. So I did just apologize, tell them I'm sorry, I'm almost done charging, even though I wasn't. This person's coming in, another person's coming in. Uh-oh, she opened up charge port. Hi there. I'm uh, using the charger. <laughs> Nobody knows. And while they were super nice and cool about it, what if someone not so nice comes? Charging at Tesla superchargers can be super stressful. This isn't just a Rivian problem though. Tesla should have addressed this when opening their network to other EVs. Hopefully in the future, companies will put their charging location in an appropriate spot. And I know that V4 superchargers will have a longer cable, so this should be an issue of the past. Here's the thing, elephant in the room. Tons of people I know hate Elon Musk. They hate him so much, they're either selling their Tesla or they're never gonna buy one to support Elon. And if that's the case, Rivian is a great choice. Other people who have never owned a Tesla, when they go to Rivian, they think it's a great car, it's awesome, which it is. But when you go from a Tesla with all the tech and performance and all that stuff, you're spoiled. I love Tesla for the tech because I'm a tech guy, not because of Elon Musk. I mean, it does take eccentric people to make great things, but that's neither here nor there. But Rivian is a great car. They create beautiful stories to make their branding something you love and want. I mean, if you really wanna dumb it down, Rivian is a nice car with some tech. The Tesla is a computer on wheels and it always pushes boundaries outside of the norm. As a tech enthusiast, I love both my Tesla and my Rivian. Both are computers on wheels with frequent updates. Rivian being in their early days has actually been updating theirs faster than Tesla, reminiscent of Tesla's early growth. Tesla's leading the way, paving the path for companies like Rivian to thrive. Both brands have bright futures with distinct goals, Personally, I'm more interested in driving my vehicles to adventures than in full self-driving. I still got my order for the R2, so I'm hoping this will be their bestseller and they improve on certain things. I'm excited though. Chris, I hope you get that R2 someday because I know you're gonna love it. Now, if you're considering either vehicle, use my referral codes. Tesla's referral offers up to $1,000 off your purchase and Rivian's gives you $750 to their gear shop and six months of free charging on the Rivian Adventure Network. Thanks for watching. I hope this cleared up any confusion. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more Rivian updates. And remember, adventure is always out there.